good afternoon. This is Quintopia. Welcome to Quintopia and welcome to this review of the Cato TGV Sudiste or Southeast as we would say it in English and because I don't know how to pronounce it in French I'm gonna say Sudist I think is maybe correct but uh, I won't do it anymore this video um, to punish either French or English speakers any more than I have to but nevertheless today I'd like to uh, share with you my review and thoughts on the Cato TGV in the iconic orange of the uh, the first original um, releases of the TGVs in France back in the the I believe early 80s maybe even late 70s um, this is a model that is out of production in fact I picked up um, the original I believe release of this um, which is from Cato obviously um, but features some fairly antiquated and older uh, packaging and this uh, original set only included um, two of the cab cars or motor cars and then two of the intermediary cars um, none of the intermediary coaches for that you need to pick up this additional set the 10199 which features the four intermediary cars at that 10199 get that in frame there sorry about that which features the four intermediary cars to make your to get yourself a, a proper length uh, TGV train um, as I said this one is out of production um, but you can still find used and probably uh, new old stock versions on the internet um, I think they're priced they're priced reasonably well maybe a little bit on the high side given the fact that it is older technology and, uh, and and not probably quite up to the standards of what Cato produces in its models today but not that far off from being certainly an acceptable model and from what everybody says on the internet so you know it's true because everybody says it on the internet this is a, a much better model of this version of the TGV than comparable versions produced by Bachmann and, and Lima. The Cato version seems to be the preferred version. It's the version I have and, and I gotta say I, I really enjoy it. It's a great looking model. So let's take a look at it. Now one of the more unusual aspects of, of this train which might surprise anybody who has a more modern Cato production unit is the coupler, the coupling system. Um, first of all, taking a close look at the, the back of this motor coach, you'll see that the there's a um, tiny little uh, pole here. Uh, not really sure what to call it. Basically, a little piece of plastic here in this gapped area. And what you're going to do is take this really crude, simple plastic piece and just snap it on there, which I will do right now, and try to do it without. It's it's a little bit uncomfortable doing it because you're you're going to be using a little bit more force than you typically like to with. There we go. You know, you heard it, you didn't see it, but nevertheless, it got snapped on there. Um, not really a very close coupling, so that's um, that's too bad. The gap there is uh, pretty good, and um, that's not obviously what we want in our trains. Now, for me, this was a very desirable model. It just got that great angular look to it that modern um, high-speed trains, TGVs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, don't have everything's gotten a lot more sleek looking, but I really like the angular look of this and uh, the rest of the train with the the orange color just looks fantastic and I just enjoy it. The detail I think it lives up to like I said earlier it lives up to a good standard. It's not probably at the standards that uh, Cato might produce if they started from scratch today or or Minitrix or Fleischmann or Tomix or anybody else, but it's it's it certainly stands the test of time and it's certainly not anything you'd be embarrassed having on your layout okay time for the report card how does this older out of production actually probably one of the the oldest uh, TGVs or train sets out there ever produced how does it rank in terms of the Quintopia report card well in terms of appearance the the, the close coupling issue the couplers that's going to definitely be a mark. Um, everything else looks pretty good. It's not great. I'm going to give it a four. Maybe even a three, but I think I'll stick with a four. It's certainly acceptable. And I think given that it's probably, although I can't say this is what I've heard, the best looking version on the market or available, it's probably going to be a four. 
In terms of performance, you're dealing with an older mechanism, an older motor. It's a little bit noisy, not as quite as smooth at slow speeds as newer production is. I'm going to give it another four. Conversion. No, nope, no plug and play on this one. You're going to have to solder a decoder yourself. So I'm giving that one a two. It's possible, but it's going to be work. Cost, again, not really a factor. These are out of production. You can still find them on eBay. Um, sometimes at reasonable prices, sometimes not. X Factor, hey, it's unusual. It's hard to find, and it's certainly a better version than apparently the competitors produce. So I'm going to give them a four on X Factor. So overall, we have a score of 14 out of four. That's about, what is that? That's about 3.5. Not the best score. Certainly, I like this train, and probably the score maybe even is probably a little bit low than, than what I really feel. It's better train than the score probably reveals, but it's older. And I think an older train is going to obviously going to not be able to stand up to some of the quality standards of newer production. So there you go. If you enjoyed this report, please feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, or visit my blog, quintopiablogspot.com. And I will be looking forward to hearing from you if you have anything to share or say. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy your trains. Wow.